fine. I hope you will be all fine. My dear friends, today I am going to tell you a story about birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam episode 9 the open call to islam who is ready to continue the story of our beloved prophet but before we begin remember my wonderful children that whenever i say prophet muhammad you say sallallahu alaihi wasallam excellent job in our last episode we said that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to invite people secretly to islam and teach them about Allah. Who remembers what house Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to teach in? Dar al Arkam, three. This went on for three years, until finally one day Jibril alaihi salam came down and told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Allah was commanding him to tell everyone that he was the final prophet. This time had come for everyone to know about Islam. But before he told everyone in Mecca, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered all of his friends and relatives first. He told them what means, you are all my relatives and friends and you know that i always say the truth allah has chosen me to be a final prophet to teach you and teach everybody what he likes allah is the only one he is our creator we cannot worship any other god with him whoever listens to allah and the quran and does good will go to jannah and whoever worships anything else other than Allah will be punished in the fire. After he finished talking, everyone was quiet. They were thinking about what he said. Everyone except one man, Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's uncle. But his heart was not good. He was the one of the evil ones. <clears throat> Abu Lahab said, Nobody listen to Muhammad. Nobody help him. Abu Lahab thought that the people of Mecca would never agree to stop worshipping the statues and idols. He said, If you help Muhammad, everybody will be against you. They will fight you and you will all die. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uncle Abu Talib said, "No, I will help Muhammad." Abu Talib was the uncle who raised Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "I'll support Muhammad and protect him. I would not let anyone harm him or hurt him." But even through Abu Talib promised to protect Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Talib did not become a Muslim himself. He was too scared of what the people of Mecca would say. If he stopped worshipping the other gods, he was afraid that they would laugh at him and curse him. So Abu Talib did not stop praying to statues and idols. Unfortunately, because he did not believe in Islam, Abu Talib would not go to Jannah. Since Prophet Muhammad wasallam had told all his relatives and friends, it was time now to tell all the people in Mecca that he was the final prophet. Prophet Muhammad wasallam climbed up a mountain that was near the Kaaba. It was called As-Safa. 
a suffer. He stood on the mountain and called in a very loud voice for everyone to come. The people heard him and came running to the mountain. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If I tell you that an enemy is coming to attack you, will you believe me?" They all said, "Yes. You have lived with us for a long time." and you have always said the truth you never lie then prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them i am warning you of a punishment from allah if you do not listen to him allah has picked me to a prophet to teach people to worship him alone those who listen to allah will go to jannah And those who worship statues and idols, things that are made of rocks and cannot talk or hear or understand or do anything or worship anything else will be punished. Worship Allah alone. When he finished talking, everyone was quiet, <coughs> thinking about what he had just said. <coughs> Everyone except one man, Prophet Muhammad's evil uncle Abu Lahab. He looked at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said, "The balag, is this why you have gathered us here today?" The balag was a mean thing to say. Abu Lahab was saying, "You are going to lose and die." Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not answer Abu Lahab's rude words. Instead, Allah answered them. Jibril came down with the words of Allah. Allah said, "Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tabat yada bi lahabi wa tab ma akhna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Sayasla na ramza talahab." وامرأته حمالة الخطب في جيدها هبل من صد. That meant that Abu Lahab would be the loser and the one who would die. He would die as a kafir and go to the fire. After the scattering at the Safa mountain, the people began to leave, thinking about what they had just heard. When Abu Lahab's wife. heard about what had happened that, that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said that abu lahab would be the loser she got very angry like abu lahab she was a evil woman she said out to her prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam she had got a huge rock and went to look for him Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting at the Kaaba with his friend Abu Bakr. When Abu Bakr saw Umm Jamil, Abu Lahab's wife, coming towards them, he felt a little scared. He was worried she is going to hurt Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had told Abu Bakr, "Don't be scared." Um Jamil looked at Abu Bakr and said, "Where is your friend? Where is Muhammad? If I see him, I'm going to hit him with a big rock." Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was right there, sitting right next to Abu Bakr. But Allah made Um Jamil's eyes not see. Allah protect Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Meanwhile the people of Mecca were now split into different groups. There were those who said they would stop worshiping statues. They believed in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and listened to him and became Muslims. They were very good and pure-hearted people. And then there were those kufar who said they would not listen to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They were disbelievers. They were evil people. The kufar were very angry that people were becoming Muslims. They would try to come out 
with different ways to stop people from listening to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and stop them becoming Muslims. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept telling everybody about Islam and the Quran. When the Kufar realized that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was going to tell everyone, even people who came from outside of Mecca like the traders or those coming to visit the Kaaba they began to worry what are we going to do how can we stop him one of them said i have an idea let's tell anyone who comes to mecca don't listen to muhammad he is a sorcerer or a magician and if you listen to him he will cast a spell on you sure enough the kufar agreed to this idea they would stand and warn of everybody coming from outside of Mecca not to listen to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But people still listened to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and became Muslims. The kuffar got very angry. They thought of another way to get the people to leave Islam. They decided to keep bothering Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Muslims. They would say mean things to them and curse them. They would also laugh at them and make fun of them, especially the poor Muslims. When they would see a poor Muslim whose clothes were torn, they would make fun of them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam felt sad and confused at what the kuffar were doing. The evil kuffar decided on a new way to get the people to stop listening to the Quran. They decided that they would keep making loud noises and sing loudly so that nobody could hear the Quran. They also started to hurt the Muslims, especially the poor ones. They would take the poor Muslims and tie them up under the hot, hot sun without any water or food and put rocks on top of them. Then they would say, will you go back to the idols, leave Islam? They said, no, Allah is one. We worship only Allah and we would not worship anything else. We will not leave Islam. The Kuffar hurt many Muslims, including Bilal bin Rabah, Ahmad bin Yasir, and his mother and father, and many others. After being patient for several years, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the Muslims that there was a very good king in a land far away and that they should go there. They would be saved there and free to worship Allah alone. It was called Al Habasha. And the king's name was Al Najash. And so a group of Muslims left Mecca by boat and traveled far to Al Habasha. That means they made Hijra to Al Habasha. They were safe there and happy. But the Kuffar were very angry that the Muslims had escaped. They sent two men to talk to the king of Al Habasha, Al Najashi, to send the Muslims back. The two men brought with them gifts to bribe Al Najashi and convince him to make the Muslims go back to Mecca. But what do you think Al Najashi will agree to send the Muslims back? We'll find out in the next episode, inshallah.